Hello everyone and welcome back to another Train Sim World 2 news video. Now, literally, we only just got the 465 announcement a couple of days ago. Now, Clinchfield Railroad has just been announced that's so coming soon. So this is called the Appalachian Gem. So, obviously this is a historic uh, railroad, this is. So this is going to be set in the past, obviously, a bit like Northern Transpennine and the Tees Valley line. But we've got an article to go through and you'll see a selection of screenshots. Not actually, well this is the only one basically of the game, it's not even the game, it's the artwork. But you'll see a selection of screenshots as we go by, which they have included in the article. And then we'll actually have a look at what the you know pictures are at the end. So, the legendary Clinchfield Railroad is coming to Trainsome World 2, and we take a look at the iconic railroad's history and captivating appeal. This actually only released the TS back in August, I believe. The Clinchfield. In the annals of American railroading, the name is Magic. The Clinchfield spun steel rails across over and through America's great Appalachian mountains, hold 20 million tons of coal a year, annually forwarded 6 million tons of manifest freight ranging from Florida citrus to steel and automobiles generated outstanding profits and operated with such um, verve and through such memorable and majestic scenery to be called the Rio Grande of the East. In short, the Clinchfield was railroading Appalachian's gem. Uh, it was no simple task to build a railroad through the Appalachians. The oldest station, no, the oldest section of what became the Clinchfield was a 19 mile um, line laid down from north from Johnson City, Tennessee in the late 1880s by the um, diminutive but grandly named Charleston, um, si what's that? Cincinnati and Chicago, the Free Sea went no farther and the successor the Ohio River and Charleston added but another 14 miles of track but then came George L Carter a man with a steel with that pro proved more than a match for the unforgiving Appalachians with his south and western later become the Caroline, Carolina Clinchfield and Ohio Carter served no Carter carved a superb railroad through the mountains at an average cost of 201,000 a mile that's quite a bit. By 1909, the CCNO had reached Dante, rhymes with Ants, Virginia, a tiny village tucked in the coal-rich country north of Sandy Ridge. Carter soon extended his railroad with what was called the Elkhorn Extension, 35 miles from Dante through the breaks of the Big Sandy to Elkhorn City, Kentucky, thus uh, tapping on the coal-laden mountains of northwestern Virginia and providing a connection with the great uh, Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, I'm guessing. Dressed for the occasion in a long tail coat and derby hut, George L. Carter drove home from the main line's final spike three miles north of Dante in 1915. In the following decades, the railroad would add branch lines, the Fremont Branch, the Nora Spur, the Greenbrier Branch and the McClure Spur to tap even more coal mines, tipples and loaders. Eventually, between Elkhorn City and Dante, the railroad would serve more than 30 coal loading facilities, and in a final count, the railroad had uh, hewn from the Appalachians more than 50 tunnels, totaling more than 10 miles in length. For the duration of its life, George, uh, George Carter's railroad would legally be the CCNO, with the Clinchfield Railroad serving it as an operating entity. From its northern terminus at Elkhorn City, Kentucky, where it connected with the Big Sandy subdivision of the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio, the Clinchfield extended 276 route miles south to Spartanburg, South Carolina, where it connected with the Charleston and West Carolina subsidiary of the Atlantic coastline, later seaboard coastline, as well as the Southern Railway. The, Clinch, the Clinchfield also had connections with the Norfolk and Western and Interstate Railroad at or near St. Paul, Virginia. In 1924, the Atlantic Coastline and the Louisville and Nashville uh, gained control of the Clinchfield. In the steam era, the Clinchfield was not surprisingly famed for its big steam, with uh, cumulated with its roster of 4664s, a group of which largely copies Union Pacific's famed Challengers. The Clinchfield began to uh, de uh, de dieselize in the late 1940s, primarily with electro-motive stylish grey and yellow clad F units and geeps. 
In the second generation of the diesel era, the Clinchfield would call upon EMD and the GE motive power of the EMD SD40, obviously from Sandpatch grade as well, becoming the latter-day workhorse of the railroad, wearing the first grey, yellow and later black and yellow liveries. The Clinchwood was both an extraordinary coal hauler and a busy and vital bridge line for manifest freight traffic by providing a link between the Chesapeake and Ohio on its north and the Atlantic coastline in the south. Indeed, the Clinchfield Railroad regularly carded multiple priority manifest freight today and called itself the Quick Service, short line route between the central west and the south east. The hottest train on the railroad was train number 97, the Florida, uh, the Florida Perishable, which, um, which via ACL, Clinchfield and C&O hurried fresh citrus to the Midwest, but the heart of the Clinchfield and its fame remained coal hauling. Despite its relatively limited size when measured by route size, the Clinchfield was one of America's pre, uh, preeminent coal haulers. And moving on to the next paragraph. Although controlled by the ACL slash SCL and LAN for decades, the Clinchfield maintained an independent identity into the 1980s. That finally changed in December 1982 with the merger of its two owners, the Seaboard Coastline and the Louisville and Nashville, into Seaboard System. In January 1983, the Clinchfield was likewise folded into the Seaboard System as the new railroad Clinchfield Division. The Seaboard System in turn became part of today's giant CSX system in 1986, and today the ex Clinchfield remains an active rail line serving as CSX Kingsport subdivision. So maybe actually in future we might see um, sort of a multiple timetable, so we get CSX as well. Who knows? Anyway, next one. The upcoming Trainton Well 2 Clinchfield Railroad route will recreate the legendary railroad as it existed in its final independent years of the 1970s and the early 1980s. The upcoming route extends from the railroad's northern terminus and connection with the CNO at Elkhorn City, Kentucky, 35 mainline route miles to Dante, which served as part a key point of CRR's coal operations. And the upcoming Train Summer 2 route will include each of Clinchfield's captivating and extraordinarily challenging to operate North End coal branch lines, the rugged and tonnage rich Fremont branch, the steep Norris Spur remote and famed Greenbrier branch and the modern McClure Spur. Together, these remarkable branch lines will add another 27 miles of trackage to the upcoming route. So that is, what, another 27, 35 or 27, that would be 62 miles then in total, so longer than Sandpatch grade. As an engineer on the upcoming Train Summer 2 Clinchfield Railroad route, you will take the throttle of the first and second generation Clinchfield Electromotive Diesels in the form of the classic F7 and Pretend SD40 to battle heavy tonnage and twisting grades as you make your way through the towering brakes of the Big Sandy, glide across the 115 foot high uh, pull point trestle and bore through 7,854 foot long Sandy Ridge Tunnel making the unrelenting tough claim to sprawling moss mine and preparation plant on the Fremont branch and much more. And that is the article there. But now we're actually going to have a look, look at the pictures, uh, obviously the ones you've seen going along. So obviously if you do want to go now, thanks for coming in. You will find a link in the description to the Discord server and to the PayPal if you do want to help support the channel. Also do check out our merch. Obviously we've got a new classic line coming on Saturday. And obviously do check out the uh, Javelin top and the Javelin mug. But yeah, let's look at what the um, pictures are. So we're starting for the first one here. And obviously all credit does go to Dovetail Games and Trainsim for these pictures. So, coming soon to Train Small 2 is the legendary and challenging Clinchfield Railroad route, fulfilling the vision of founder George L. Carter, um, Clinchfield EMD SD40 3016 and sisters have heavy coal tonnage on the move as a southbound train emerges from tunnel number 14 and strides over the second McClure Bridge amid the full foliage of, 19, no, of November 1975. Now on to the next one. Right, so here is the next one. Dante, Virginia and its yard and engine terminal served as the heart of Clinchfield's northeast coal operations. A gentle rain is falling as Clinchfield first and second generation power congregate at Dante awaiting their next 
Cole. Veteran Clinchfield F70, no, F78801 helped dieselise the railroad in 1948 and served in the Appalachians for nearly three decades. And then moving on to the next image, this is, if it's going to scroll down, that would be nice. Uh, Elkhorn City, Kentucky, in addition to serving as Clin uh, Clinchfield's northern terminus in interchange point with the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio, was a source of originating coal tonnage as a southbound Clinchfield train awaits departure. Elkhorn City, numerous coal dock and loading tippers, the line, the yard in the distance. The caboose belongs to parent seaboard coastline. On to the next. Keeping the Clinchfields, thousands of coal loads and scores of trains on the move required record keeping and communications. And the Clinchfield Railroad Clerk is busy in the Elkhorn City Yard office which offered a picture window view of the yard action. Now moving on to the next image. Night has fallen on Elkhorn City and a big EMD motive power awaits its next Appalachian assignment. On the left is GP38-2005 and on the right right is the trio of husky clinchfield sd40s that will mourn will no doubt be take tatting heavy coal tonnage south framed by appalachian foliage the set of clinchfield sd40s glide across the 115 foot high pool point trestle just south of elkhorn city the emd sd40 was clinchfield's second generation mainline workhorse and clinchfield railroad rostered 25 units which arrived on the railroad between 1966 and 1971 and then obviously the next one, the Appalachian majesty of the brakes of the Big Sandy is on full display as the Clinchfield coal train emerges from the state line tunnel and grinds its way upgrade along the path of Russell Fork amid 1975 full foliage. And we move on to the next one. To stretch its steel rails through the Appalachians, the Clinchfield constructed more than 50 tunnels with a cumulative length of more than 10 miles. Near in Clinchfield, Virginia, SD40-3016 and the Coltrane exit Sykes Tunnel. And on to the next one. A captivating and busy location on the Clinchfield mainline, Fremont, Virginia, was host to a depot, the Fremont River Coal Tipple, and the junction point between the mainline and a rugged Fremont branch, which alone generated more than 8 millions of tonnes of coal annually. On to the next one. Amid the last lingering rays of November 1975 evening, the Clinchfield puts on an unforgettable show as a southbound coal train behind SD40-3016 meets an empty northbound at Trammell, Virginia. CAR-3016 and Kin have just emerged from the 7,850 foot long Sandy Ridge Tunnel. The upcoming train similar to Clinchfield Railroad route will feature the railroad's first and second generation electromotive diesel workhorses. At Dante, Virginia in 1975, Clinchfield F7A810 and a 1951 project of EMD and the SD43000 delivered to the railroad in 1966 await call. Several of Clinchfield's classic F units served into the 1980s. And then on to, I think this is a couple of last images now. So we've got, if it wants to actually do it, two of Clinchfield's distinctive steel cabooses stand at Dante. The upcoming train similar to Clinchfield Railroad route will include the railroad's well-known Santa Fe style caboose, as exemplified by CRR 1064 on the right. Always more cold to haul as dust settles amid the Appalachians at Elkhorn City. A trio of Clinchfield SD40s have tied onto 90 loaded hoppers and 11,000 gross tons of coal delivered by the Chesapeake and Ohio. Unforgettable Appalachian Railroad will be coming to train some more too soon. That was quite a long video, obviously hopefully everyone did enjoy that premiere. That is going to be it, obviously you'll find the link in the description to the Discord server and to the PayPal if you do want to help support the channel. We will be streaming this at midnight release, so if you do want to see it, do subscribe, it all does help out. Obviously yeah, do check out our merch store. Hopefully everyone has enjoyed and I hopefully will see you in the next one. Pop all your thoughts in the comments below. See you everyone. Take care.